Okay, so we're going to start back up. We're going to we're going to come back to our EA, and we're going to think a little bit more about that hill and that rock and those atoms because everything in this chapter comes back to periodic trends. Everything. So if we're talking about electron affinity, what is electron affinity? It's the energy change associated with adding electrons. And we said if we have a negative electron affinity, does that mean that the atom is more stable or less stable with the new electron? It's more stable. Negative Ea means that it is more stable once it has gained that extra electron and gotten a negative charge. If we have a positive Ea, it's less stable, it's actually not stable at all. It's like trying to hold a spring down with your thumb. The minute you let go, boing! I should have springs for this. I should definitely have springs for this. And I could give each table a spring and you can just hold them down. That would be good. That would be good. Okay. Where do you think we would tend to see negative EAs on your periodic table? Put your fingers there. I see most people have their fingers somewhere over here. Okay. Why? Boy, that's a terrible circle. Because this is, for instance, group 17. If it can gain one electron, how stable is it? Crazy stable! If it can gain one electron, it looks just like a noble gas. I want to be a noble gas when I grow up, says every halogen ever. Where would you tend to find those positive EAs? Put your finger on it. Yes, positive EAs would be over here because what happens to lithium or hydrogen or sodium if it gains an electron? It's completely unstable. It doesn't want to gain electrons. It wants to get rid of an electron. And you're giving me another one? Are you kidding? I can't take another electron. I want to get rid of the one I have. I don't want your electron. Ugh. Those tend to be positive. So if we look at the trend with electronegativity, or I'm sorry, electron affinity, geez, Louise Moser, don't screw that one up. EA tends to become more negative across the periods. So if we put that into a graphic, EA negativity increases as we go this way. So we go from actual um, positive EAs to negative EAs. So we go from actual positive EAs in group 1 and 2 to super negative EAs in group 17. EA electron affinity tends to become more negative as we go across periods. Okay, well that's easy enough. Okay, this is the last concept we're going to talk about today. Ionic radii. Remember that positive ions are what? I have positive feelings about cats. Okay, you know what, you people, it is a Tuesday morning that feels like a Monday morning. You had six days to sleep in. Put your pencils down. Get the imaginary cat in your lap. I'm not messing around, people. I am going to make you pet an imaginary cat while making purring sounds. And we are not stopping until every single person in this room is making purring sounds and petting an imaginary cat in their lap. Okay, I hope it didn't go bad over there. No, because remember, the cat is happy. We have positive feelings about cats. Happy cats. Come on! Pet your, pet your imaginary cat. You think I'm messing around? You think I'm messing around? That's cute. I am not messing around. You pet that cat. I don't see you petting the cat. Come on, Hal. Step it up. Pet the, pet the cat. <laughs> oh, that's nice, Eddie. You must actually have a cat. You're actually, you don't have a cat. You should, because you know exactly how to hold a cat that would be very happy. The cat would be very, very happy. She likes to get. These people think I'm fooling around. I'm fooling around. I say pet a cat. You pet a cat. Okay. So, positive ions are cat ions. Which group tends to make positive ions? Stick your finger on it. Who here has their finger on group one? Yay! Group one makes positive ions. They make cat ions. Oh, here's one. 
<laughs> um, does your cat bite? Nah. Get it? Because we have positive feelings about cats, so clearly the cat doesn't bite. And sodium, N-A, is in group one. Does your cat bite? Nah. Man, it just gets better and better. <sighs> okay, inside my head, this is better and better. I know you can have your own opinion. Okay, so there's a nice, innocent, neutral sodium atom. We said that sodium would have a larger radius than lithium and a smaller radius than potassium, right? Look at the periodic table. Look above and below it. Sodium has a larger radius than magnesium right next door. More electrons on the outer level to get pulled in. What happens when we give up an electron? I'm on the wrong slide altogether, huh? Let's get back to here. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Paste. What happens, so right now, again, if we remember our, our little tug of war metaphor, let me shrink this up to there. We have 11 protons pulling on 11 electrons. What happens when we change the odds and we have sodium 1 plus? What's our tug of war look like now? What does our tug of war look like now? It's no longer 11 to 11. What would happen to the radius? What did we say about ionization energy? Removing subsequent electrons is harder because the electrons that are left, the nucleus is holding onto more tightly. Well, what happens when we remove that electron? The whole thing kind of contracts. The whole thing shrinks a little bit. Now, in the case of sodium, it just lost a whole energy level. But in addition, it's now, there are now 11 protons pulling on 10 electrons. It can get a much better grip. The radius shrinks. What happens when we gain an electron? So let's look at fluorine. Um, this is all about forces of attraction and repulsion. So when we have a positive ion, cation, you people are just no fun, honestly. I don't know if it's because it's too early in the morning or what. I'm going to start bringing coffee in for you. Um, <laughs> when you have a positive ion, it shrinks. When you have a negative ion, it fluffs up. It's like putting more air in the balloon. All because of forces of attraction and repulsion. A word of, of note on the test for this chapter. You'll notice that there's not a whole lot of math here. This is largely conceptual. We, we get a couple chapters that are more conceptual than mathematic, and this is one of them, unfortunately. Um, a lot of people who are in chemistry love mathy science. And chemistry, we teach mathy chem. But this is one of the chapters that is largely conceptual. I expect you to be able to explain the underlying reasons for these trends. That's why I'm going into the level of depth that I am in these explanations. I could just put the slide up and say, hey, electronegativity gets more negative as you go across the periods. End of story and tell you to memorize it, but I don't want you to just memorize it. I really want you to understand why that happens. And I want you to think about it in terms of stability. I want you to think about it in terms of forces of attraction and repulsion. I could just tell you, well, positive ions are slightly smaller than their neutral atom counterparts. Memorize it. But I don't, I don't think that's a good way to approach it. So I want you to think about the underlying why. Um, are, you, are you hearing in what I'm saying that there will probably be a number of essay questions on this test where I ask you to explain these concepts? Yes, yes, there will. Um, what's the relationship between ionization energy and atomic radius? Inverse. Why? I want you to be able to explain why. So, because I think that that helps you with everything that follows, if you really understand the mechanics below it. Um, anyway, that's where we're going to stop.
Um, you have the rest of the time to work on homework, ask questions, etc. Tomorrow, so here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and make your test Friday. So let me write that on here. Test is Friday, December 1st, um, which means we'll start a brand new, fresh, shiny unit in the two weeks before Christmas break, which is just perfect. Um, homework will be due Thursday. So we're going to finish up concepts here today. Thursday in the first period, or finish up concepts tomorrow. Good Lord, I can't make sentences or sense. Um, tomorrow we'll finish up the last few concepts from this chapter, which are pretty minimal, but I want to give you the time to actually think about it deeply. Thursday we will grade homework, and then we'll do some review and clarification. You'll have a FIP quiz either tomorrow or Thursday. I'm not sure which. And then Friday's your test. So, Questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, oder nicht? Okay, perfect.